Guys? Guys? Wait, I can't hear you. It's too dark in here. But how am I supposed to see anything in this darkness? Alright. Well, at least it's not that dark out here anymore. So, welcome to Astro Addict and welcome to how to set up your Skywatcher mount. The HQ5 comes with a tripod with adjustable legs, the mount head, a metal plate for your equipment, a metal rod thingy, and matching bolt and nut for stability. Two count. Two counterweights, each 5.1 kilos, hand controller with cable. At first, take the tripod, spread the legs and place it roughly pointing north. So you see this little dot here and the N over here. The N is supposed to point at the north star. So this has to point north. Let's do it. If needed, place the feet on solid stones. They will sink into white garden soil, which is no good. Next, use a level to get the base level. As I started this out, um, I tried to always to get the level on all three axes, but I realized that with three legs you only need to balance two axes. So, over this way. If the base is level now, the two legs are perfectly flat. And now the other side. And your mount is leveled. So at this stage I usually put the rest of the scope together. So I'll just do that real quick and then I'll be right back. And of course also part of the HQ5, the counterweights, which you need to position at the right place to get the balance of both axes correct. The almighty SynScan hand controller. Well, I guess you already know where to put this, so over there and plug it in. If you ever want to know what great balance is, that's not it. For the power supply, the mount of course came with an extra cable, but this, but the cable has only the standard cigarette input, I think that's how, how it's called. So I bought this one in the next door with the correct plug. And over here we have power, so let's plug it in. Now, since we have power, we can turn the scope on and go through the initial uh, hand controller setup. I won't put you through this one because I think it's pretty straightforward and you will know what to put in there. So, next step, the polar alignment. And for the polar alignment, we need to wait for nightfall. Nice. The polar alignment itself would be worth uh, whole another video but if you get the basic steps and I will get you through this right now it's very easy and very quickly done if you know what to do so you need to look through the polar scope in order to get the scope lined up with Polaris the north star in the southern hemisphere there is uh, no star which you, were on which you can align on but it's still possible because there are the in the scope, the patterns you can see, you can line up the stars you have there and everything is centered perfectly. So we can screw the cap off and put the 
front cap off and you need to tilt the declination axis 90 degrees in order to see anything through your polarscope. So let's do that. Now that we can look through the polarscope, as I said, you need to center this axis here on Polaris. So, but how do you know where Polaris should be in this scope? If you look through here and if your scope is switched on, you can turn on the LED in the scope and you will see the circle on the outside. It's the position that Polaris will take over the day and over the night because the star is not exactly north. So you need to place this star in the correct spot over here. But how do you know where to put it? I use an app on my phone called Polar Aligner Pro. It tells you, dependent on your coordinates and time, where Polaris should be. And you can switch between different radicals, whatever you have in there. And then you use the uh, alt as bolts on your mount. So the uh, these uh, two axes, the horizon and how high you want to, uh, the scope to point. Use these bolts over here to get Polaris in the right position. And now, since the scope is polar aligned, we can start with the star alignment. This process is necessary because your scope must know where it's pointing at. So you take three stars for the three star alignment. You need to slew to each star and center the star in the field of view. And helpful for this process are... I have a little red dot over here. So I put this in the finder scope bracket of my scope in order to get these stars more easily because if you don't have this and your scope is pointing somewhere close to the star you will never find the star. So this is very helpful and in order to reach the highest amount of accuracy I have an illuminated radical. So this has a little battery in it. You see a little cross over there. You can center the star perfectly. So let's do the star alignment. After you made the setup on your hand controller it will ask you to make the star alignment and I usually choose the three star alignment if, I, if I'm going for visual observing. If you plan to do astrophotography deep sky with a DSLR back here, I usually go for plate solving. I already did a tutorial on plate solving before so I'll link to that over somewhere over here. You can look, uh, look it up but now the three star alignment for the visual observing. So the hand controller is asking you to do the alignment and you need to choose three, three stars as I said. So let's pick the first one. The first star, Vega, 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 I don't know. I don't know how you call it in English. So the hand controller wants to pick this one. You can choose any star visible from your location. It's always good to have a very wide field of view in your garden or backyard, whatever you're doing. And now the first star. And now, as it says, the arrow keys will move the scope. You can put on the slew rate by pressing the button number 2 and center the star in the eyepiece. Once the star is in the center of the eyepiece, press enter. And the next two stars, the same procedure. And if you have centered the two stars, your alignment is complete and you can start your perfect night of visual observing. And what we will be doing tonight is right behind you. I can barely see anything because of this bright light in my face. But one thing I can see very clearly. The full moon behind us. Now back to the setup for astrophotographers. At the stage of assembling the rig, you don't need the finder scope or the mirror and eyepiece. I attach the cam and the gate scope immediately and connect the mount with the PC. No star alignment needed since you will be plate solving your way to the stars. General tips I have. For visual observing of the moon you don't need polar alignment or star alignment. Place the tripod roughly north and use the arrow keys to center the moon and choose lunar tracking. For astrophotography, taking your time to achieve perfect polar alignment, balance and focus is absolutely necessary to get good images. Your polar scope has an arrow which can be reduced by performing a collimation. I will leave a link in the description on this topic since it's rather complicated. 
For more precision on polar alignment, use polar drift alignment, for example the one from PhD, it's very self-explanatory. Well, that's it for the main part. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave some in the comments, I will try to get to every single one of you. And the sad thing about this night, the most of you know the lunar eclipse is happening for us here in Europe to tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. I won't be able to get this one because I need to work tomorrow, so that's how it goes. But I hope you guys are having a great time with the lunar eclipse and get some great photos or time lapses. Uh, for me, or for us, I'd say, we will now pack this thing back up and get some warm tea because it's minus 5 degrees Celsius out here and my feet, my hands and our heads are freezing to death and we'll see you next time. Clear nights. Bye.